this animal might look like a wolverine from Wish. But they're actually a fascinating species that we're only beginning to understand. In many ways, they're the opposite of what you'd expect from a honey badger relative. <laughs> but their mysterious eating habits and their effect on other animals around them is what sets them apart. This is the misunderstood honey badger of the jungle, the Tyra. Hi, I'm Danielle Dufault, and you're watching Animal Logic. The Tyra is the South American version of the wolverine, with a similar look and hunting strategy. An Amazonian wolverine. Now that's a Marvel movie I'd watch. But while he could probably protect us from supervillains, there's not much he could do about some of the biggest dangers we face in real life, like online threats. That's why I use Aura, the sponsor for today's episode. All it takes is for one person to get a hold of your personal info and you could be a victim of identity theft. I googled myself and was shocked to see how much stuff there is online. Your email addresses, home address and health records are all online and Aura shows you which data brokers are selling that information and automatically submits opt-out requests for me. Keeping that information safe helps prevent your social media and bank accounts from being hacked. You have to keep it safe. Aura comes with identity and credit monitoring, antivirus, a VPN, and several other tools for a very affordable price. You might have some of these already, but Aura gives you the peace of mind to have a safer online experience. I value my privacy, and I value yours. Click on the link in the description, or go to aura.com slash animalogic to start your two-week free trial. Thanks, Aura. And now, back to the amazing monkey weasels of the jungle. Tyras are found in most of Latin America, from Mexico to Argentina. Uruguay and Chile are the only tyraless countries in South America. Sucks to be them. They thrive in most types of forest, as they're amazing climbers and will spend a huge part of their lives on trees. Because of their semi-arboreal lifestyle and warm weather ecosystems, they're only about a third of the weight of their cousins from up north, who need to get big to survive the cold winters and walk on top of deep snow. The largest tyras are about 110 centimeters long, including the tail, so about as long as Airbud. Wolverines have giant claws to dig burrows and find food. Oh, Andreas, you're getting the paw. Get look at the paw. Oh, look at those paws. Oh, wow. They're human-like, like bears. Yeah. The Native Americans call them skunk bears. But if you've ever had long nails, you know that they make everything so much harder. So instead, they have curved little climbing claws. They're powerful enough to help the tyra climb down trees head first, like squirrels do with their thick, heavy tail providing balance, also like the fluffy rodents. And like squirrels, they use that power to reach fruits and nuts in the highest branches of a tree. Yep, despite their intense stare and stalking gait, these jungle mustelids are mostly vegetarians. There have even been reports of tyras taking unripe bananas from plantations and hiding them for a few days until they're ripe enough to eat. Of course, if they find easy prey, like a bird's nest or a baby monkey, they'll eat it. But don't expect them to chase down tapirs, bush dog style. To navigate branches and make sure they're walking on safe surfaces and avoiding venomous animals, tyras have foot whiskers, ultra-sensitive sensory hairs that continually give them information about the surface they tread on. Because of their lifestyle and need for dense forest, people in their regions can go their whole lives without seeing them. Tyras are solitary, skittish, and well camouflaged when on a tree. There have only been a couple of sightings of multiple tyras together, and they were thought to be a mom and her teen children. Tyra babies are raised solely by their mom and become independent at about 10 months of age. They're so cute when they're young. They look like little monkey cats. Because of how rare it is to see them, there has been some controversy about their lineage and classification. 
16 subspecies have been proposed. Seven have been accepted, but there are scientists who still argue that there aren't enough physical differences between them to warrant subspecies status. There is also some discussion about their place in the Mustelid family tree, with some researchers putting them genetically closer to fishers than to wolverines. That would make sense, since fishers are basically the same size and are also arboreal. They really look alike. The main difference is, is that fishers are nocturnal hunters, and tyras are diurnal and mostly vegetarian. Finding colorful ripe fruit is easier during the day. More recently, there has been speculation that they might be more flesh-hungry than we ever thought. Red howler monkeys seem to actively avoid them, and brocket deer have been recorded as confirmed tyra prey. A shift from opportunistic hunters to full-time omnivores would put them even closer to fishers and wolverines. All the other mustelids in its range are carnivores. Giant otters are big and ferocious enough to hunt caimans. Neotropical otters spend their days fishing and browsing the riverbeds for crustaceans. And greater grizzons seem to be strict lizard and rodent eaters. But it's possible that Tyra's found a niche as fruit eaters and sometimes killers. Only further research will tell. There is so much we need to learn about Tyra's, and trap cams have become one of the most powerful tools to study them. As technology advances, we'll get a much clearer picture of their behavior and biology. And if they continue to thrive, we might be able to see one in person. While working on this episode, we sent our producer Andreas to see if he could find a Tyra. We're driving up into the Andes of Colombia, not far from the Nevado del Ruiz. These tropical highlands are a wildlife paradise and one of the best places to see the elusive Tyra. Today we're Owls Watch Reserve in Caldas, Colombia, and we're looking for tyras. Tyras are known to go for garbage cans, so we have set up a little fake garbage can over there. We have put bananas and fruits and other things they like. So hopefully it will come and we have our own little trap can over here. So let's we see it. Sorry, I had a brain fart and I forgot I was supposed to speak in English. We also set up some trap cans on trees as well as some lures to attract it. If we see it, we could befriend it. Why not? And on this branch, we'll have some bananas and other fruits for the Tyra. If she comes, she'll probably come out of here from the forest. If she comes for a little banana, we'll see her on this camera. It's been a few hours, so we're gonna go check on the trap camps. Hopefully, hopefully one Tyra. One Tyra, that's all I want. One Tyra. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see any Tyras on the trap camps. But luckily, we did get to see some really amazing birds and one of the coolest insects in the world. It's a tarantula hawk. One of the most painful bites in the world. I will not get bit by these guys. But they're here looking for tarantulas. Why don't you live here? And finally, after a while of waiting, we heard that the Tyra had shown up at a different location. This is a massive nature reserve, and you can never tell where she's going to show up. So that was amazing, we got it on a trap cam. And luckily we couldn't see it in person, but we'll come back here and see it next time. So it's called Owl's Watch in Colombia, and it's amazing. So come here if you can. So what should we talk about next? Please let me know in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe for new episodes every week. Thanks for watching. See ya!